It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And today I would like to walk you through the reworking of a pot. This arrangement started out as this, basically this piece of petrified yucca, which, or acatillo, uh, possibly that belongs to Hannah's, one of Hannah's friends, her dad or grandfather. I mean, it's old. It's just really, really old, and it and it's special. This piece of piece of petrification is very special. So she asked Hannah to work with it, to do something with it. And over the years, it has taken on many different types of forms. We've planted it in a pot this way. We've planted it this way. We've laid it on its side. So I thought today. Uh, I'd walk you through the newest reinvention of this pot. This friend um, lives in Mexico. It's very, very hot. She's very, very busy. She doesn't always remember to water. So, you know, a couple times a year, this pot is in dire need of being reworked. So you can see that we have top dressing aplenty in here. We've got pebbles. We've got rock. Don't even worry about that. When you're reinventing a pot, you don't have to pick every single piece of material out if you don't want to. You can just add stuff on top. These plants came back with the pot and you can see this Haworthia cutting had thrown off roots. This aloe also is establishing a root system. Even this tiny little what looks like Pacavaria is throwing off some air roots. So it was all, you know, valiantly trying to get its legs, and we are just going to fluff it up today together. So, say what? Oh, and it was also, Hannah said that this arrangement was also enjoyed in, indoors, which, as you know, can be stressful on these plants. So... Let's start with our thriller, which is this piece of wood. And I am going to plant the center. So the first thing I wanna do is sink it down where it's stable, just slightly left or right of center. Okay, now I'm going to start with my larger cuttings, the things that make the most visual impact, the things that are the biggest or the tallest. I'm going to start with this piece of aloe noblis, and I'm going to tuck it in right here next to the wood. Then I'm going to take a little Crassula argentea sunset, and shove it in right next to the noblest. I like the fluffiness of that against the edge and I like the different contrast of the needly kind of tough looking leaf against the softness of the crassula. So now I feel like I need some color. I've got green, I've got yellow. How about a Fred Ives? How about some purple? We've been talking a lot about Fred Ives and what a tough, tough plant it is in the garden. So I'm gonna tuck that Fred Ives right there. Now what I need is something that's got some bend to it that I can put in front of the Fred Ives that isn't gonna overpower it in time, that isn't gonna get too big. This is Aeonium haworthii, which is a cousin to the kiwi. See, the haworthii doesn't turn yellow, it's greener with a little bit of a red tinge, but it doesn't get that soft yellowness. What it lacks in color though, it makes up for in toughness. This is a much tougher plant. So why not add them both, right? Just tuck those right in. Ooh, ah, I can't really see what you see, but from here it looks, it looks, good. looks great. Hannah says it looks great. Okay, so now I have reached kind of a crossroads. Um, I've planted a lot of plants. I've got my foundation piece and I feel like I need to make a comma so so to speak in my arrangement. So I'm going to try staging a little piece of rock. This is some lava rock that I pulled out of the front yard. Um, just grabbed it because I liked the size of it. 
So by staging the rock, I'm basically giving the eye some place to rest. It's very, very pleasing in a succulent arrangement to have a place for the eye to rest. Here's a really interesting little aeonium that I found in the backyard that I think I'll plant. It's soft and I'll plant it right here because I don't want to completely obscure the wood, but I want something soft up against that new rock. Oh, that's very nice, very pretty. And remember, you don't have to cover every square inch of your arrangement with plants. So I feel like maybe right there in front, some new top dressing is in order. I found about a quarter of a bag of burgundy 3 8 in the garage. And I thought that would be nice to give it a little bit of a pop. When Hannah had done this arrangement for her before, she'd used a lighter rock. So I thought it might be fun to mix it up this time and do something darker. And you can even mix your mediums if you want. That's fine. Okay, now I'm working my way around um, to the back of the pot. I'm not sure how Hannah's friend's mom is going to display this arrangement, if it's going to need to be uh, pretty from 360 degrees, but I'm going to make it pretty from 360 degrees because it is a round pot. So I'll flip this around for you. Now this Haworthia, this came back with the pot. Look at how tough and all of those cute little roots. So we'll, re we'll, we'll use that. We're going to repurpose everything that came back that survived. I'm going to take this other piece of aloe that was throwing off some really cool little roots and tuck that in here too. Then I feel like a little bit of color. Here's a little sunburst aeonium that I'm going to tuck in right here. And then I want to get something up underneath that, so I'm going to use little pieces of Argentia. I'm not sure, TBH, that that Aeonium Sunburst is going to make it, so I want to make sure that I pack a lot of things in around it, just in case it doesn't. Okay, here's a little kiwi. Look at this Rubrotinctum aurora that I pulled out of the gutters. Isn't that a stunner? Let's do one of those right here. Wait, let me make it shorter. Or let me find a shorter one. Oh, cute, 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 cute. Okay, it's feeling a little light right here. And I think I'd like to pull in some more rock. So now I have, in this arrangement, I've got three elements, three hard elements. I've got the, the wood and this arrangement of rock and this arrangement of rock. And when I look down on this, it still feels like it's a, like it's just a little light. It's not to scale yet. I don't have enough going on. So I'm going to plant the center of this of this piece with my glue. I'm going to take some nice big fatties like this ghosty. Put a little glue right there, because I want these to stick. Some rubertinctum. It's really cool because I can actually kind of tuck the plants down into the holes in this wood. It really lends itself well to this. A little sedum right there. I think I want some color, so I'm going to pull some more of the Argentia Sunset. Okay. 
You know, this is just the most fun. You know, you can make a succulent arrangement out of literally anything, and I would very much like to see some of your creative ideas. So please send me some pictures via Instagram at Laura Loves Succulents. Tag me in your stories or just send them to my direct message. I'd love to see what you come up with. This is a really interesting little plant. Looks like a, some sort of a pack of area. Very tough. So I'm going to tuck that right here. Some people ask me, how do you know when to stop? And, you know, I say err on the side of more. Remember particularly that these cuttings that are on this piece of petrification are going to struggle a little bit more than the ones that are planted in the soil. So I want to make sure I offer as much as I can. God, this is so cool. I got to turn this around and look at it myself. Oh, that's pretty. You know, I really thought, I was thinking this was the back, but when I look at it, now I'm feeling like maybe it's the front. And I'm also thinking that I need something kind of coming out right here. How about this ruber tinctum? Oh, I don't need the glue. The ruber tinctum and maybe this little stand of sedum. Get that there. And tuck that there. And then maybe another little rosette right there. And you can mess around and play with this all you want, but I am feeling really, really good about this. I'm just going to throw down a little more top dressing where I see that it needs it. And this will be what we give back to Hannah's friend. Isn't that so happy? and so pretty and so delightful. And I didn't really use that many plants, did I? So be creative, have fun, be sure and tag me. Let me see what you come up with. Another thing that I wanted to mention to you today, since here in San Diego, we've been having a lot of rain and the snails are coming out and you've been asking me what I use. This is my go-to product. This is Ortho Bugetta. This is a chemical. You do need to apply it wearing gloves. The main ingredient is sulfur, and this is how it works. It says, uh, the product is a unique blend of the active ingredient sulfur with, with slug and snail bait additives. And then it says that sulfur is an element found in nature and used in many fertilizers. The bait will degrade and become a part of the soil. The bait is attractive to slugs and snails and lures them from their hiding places. Ingestion of the bait will cause them to cease feeding. After eating the bait, slugs and snails cease feeding, become less mobile, and begin to die within one to three days. So um, I would suggest that you apply this every three days or so if you have an infestation. And it's they're just granules. You use gloves and you just sprinkle them around. Um, and there you have it. Hopefully we can control your snails as I do mine. All right. Well, this was a really, really fun arrangement to make. I look forward to see what you guys come up with. Have a wonderful, wonderful day in the garden. And I will see you on the flippity. This has been Laura of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day.